Welcome along guys to the second part of my uh, Kawasaki Ninja H2 SX review. Now I've had this bike for about two weeks from Kawasaki. If you look at the top corner there, I put a card up. I did a first ride of this motorcycle about a week ago. This is the second part of the ride. Today we're going to Lulworth Coast. Lulworth Cove, which is a lovely little cove on the Dorset coastline, back down to the Jurassic Coast again. And you know, this bike is a touring machine, so you've really got to put it through its paces. You've got to actually go somewhere on it. There's no point just driving around the local roads for an hour. So we're taking it down to Lulworth Cove. It's about 100 miles there, 100 miles-ish back. Um, I've got a full tank of petrol. I've reset the trip. We can see exactly how much fuel this big old beast uses. The weather is pretty shitty it's been raining we've got wet roads we're going to get wet on the way so it's a full-on proper touring test if you like full weather conditions full weather protection testing it's all going to be in this video so sit back get yourself a cup of tea and uh chopsy roll the intro <laughs> So my first ride of this bike, I really enjoyed it. It was lovely. As I said in the last video, I mean, I've got my own Ninja H2, so not the SX, you know, the full-on shiny one. So I know this sort of power plant very, very well. And uh, it's so different to mine, this. It's so, you know, this is really tuned as a, as a mile munching machine, a comfortable machine, such a smooth machine. So if you haven't seen that video, you know go and take a look at it after you've after this one if you like don't want to interrupt your viewing pleasure as part of this video we're going to test the stuff i didn't test last time can you see things like the toys this bike's got the adaptive cruise control the blind spot detection and i didn't test any of that in that first ride video so we're going to give all that a good workout and just see how it is on a long distance i mean the seat is very comfortable on this but you know is the peg position going to become a bit uncomfortable after a while? I mean, that's all the questions we are going to answer. In case I forget to say, I am six foot two because obviously so I'm quite big. So any uncomfortable legs which could occur, you know, bear in mind I've got long legs and I'm also 20 stone. I don't know what difference that makes, but from a comfort point of view, but that's the facts. I mean, the bike is very, very comfortable. I mean, you know, as I said last time, perfect riding position, I think. A little bit of weight on your wrist, tiny bit, 10%, and uh, the rest on your bottom. And that's why for this year, oh, he'll hold control. First little toy we can test out. That's quite nice. I just didn't know. It came on automatically. It must be the IMU notice the bike. You know, the front is up because I'm on a hill. I haven't had to double press or anything to activate it. It's automatically come on, so... Uh, that's quite nice. So just to recap a few little stats about this bike. This is the base uh, SX version. So this doesn't have the electronic suspension. You know, it's not the SC model, but it still comes loaded with all of the electronic toys like the adaptive cruise control, blind spot detection, the hill hold control. You know, you've still got all that. So even though it's not the SC, they're not limiting, limiting you on the electronic goodies apart from the suspension the highlight of this bike or i guess the you know the headline thing about this bike is of course that supercharger supercharged engine thousand cc inline four with a dirty great kawasaki produced supercharger on it it is a hell of a power plant i know this doesn't make the same power figures as the the Ninja H2, but this is all tuned for torque, and this thing builds power so quickly. And what is so nice about it, you know, when you're not on the gas, when you're just cruising like I am now, everything is so smooth, the controls are beautiful, there's no vibrations, and I mean hardly anything at all. It's quite incredible. I don't think I've ever ridden an inline four engine which is as smooth and vibration free as this one. And I've not even really noticed much vibrations creeping in as the revs rise. I think, you know, Kawasaki must have, I don't know how many balancing shafts they've got on this motor, but they've eliminated practically all of the vibrations. So it's beautiful. It's as smooth as well-churned butter. Front brakes, 
really nice front brake. I mean, it's one finger braking on here, quite easy. There's not many bikes which you can com comfortably do one finger braking on, and certainly not that many great big heavy 260-ish kilo bikes you can do that on. Woohoo! This is one of them. The way the speed builds with this bike is really, you know, quite incredible. And I think this is why it's going to be brilliant for a trip like this, you know. It's effortless. It's effortless the way it glides over the tarmac. That suspension's beautiful. It's also effortless the way it makes its power, you know, the way the speed increases. Uh, it, it's, I think this is going to be the perfect bike for this sort of trip. As I mentioned last time, I mean, you don't get masses of feedback from the road. So that would probably be my only criticism with this suspension. There is a lack of feedback from the tarmac, so you do have to put a bit more faith in the tyres. But... Let's get it in third, get it in the power, and we'll fly past this CRV. We'll annihilate him. 4,000 revs, in the power. Whoosh! <laughs> Turbine smooth. So I filled this bike up before I left and I've reset the trip meter. So the estimated range, well it says I've got 178 miles left. And I've done, let me tell you, I have done 13 miles. So yeah, it estimated I was gonna get 199 miles when I filled the bike up. So let's see what it does to a tank. I've been pretty impressed with the, the fuel consumption on this bike. It's got a 19 litre tank. And if it does 200 miles on 19 litres when ridden normally or aggressively, <laughs> depending how this trip goes, it'll be really impressive. I've got a bloody supercharger on this. Well, we're just coming on to a small section of motorway here, one of the few bits of motorway on, on the trip. So let me just demo the uh, adaptive cruise control quickly. So put the cruise control on. Uh, you get the little light up in the top here, look, to show you've got the cruise control on. And then you do set. And then I've set it at 57 miles an hour. And that little, little green car there means the bike has seen a car in front of it or a lorry in this case and if I try and inc with the buttons on here increase my maximum speed to let's say 75 of course it won't do it because it will just sit behind that lorry and you can adjust how close you want the bike to sit to the vehicle in front but you have to only do that when you stop to get into the menus to do that you can't adjust that distance while you're rolling other systems, like the ones on the Ducati Multistrada, the uh, 1290 Super Adventure, you can adjust that while you're riding, but from what I can see, you can only adjust that, sat that distance to the car in front when you're off the bike. And I did set that to be as close as possible, and I think it's defaulted back to being as far away as possible. So it's brilliant. I mean, I've used it quite a lot, and it will sit here, and it will maintain that distance. If I indicate, and pull out the bike will automatically accelerate until it you know it still can see the car in front but it will, until it reaches that set distance it will sit behind that Peugeot in front so if you do a lot of motorway miles adaptive cruise control is I think fantastic but it's a little bit restrictive on here that you can't adjust that distance while you're actually riding and here comes the rain there's going to be showers all the way today. There's also talk of uh, perhaps thunder. <laughs> Thunderstorms. I've never been in a thunderstorm on a motorcycle. Just having problems with the camera not recording again. Ah, oh, it's a pain. It's proving a right pain, my Hero 10. So we're now in, uh, oh, where is this? Stallbridge, just, just something like that. <laughs> Oh, it's wetty, it's a wetty. We're going to the seaside and it's raining. How very British. <laughs> Did I pack my speedos? 
and why are we not filtering more to the point i bet there'd be some crazy english people swimming <laughs> i bet when we get there there's somebody swimming place your bets in the comments is there going to be any crazy english swimming <laughs> in the rain oh, i think it's quite likely oh it's now proper rain so you know wind and weather protection on this bike is actually pretty good it's, you know, it's nice and wide you know the screen's a decent height but you know when it rains you will get wet <laughs> it is a motorcycle but uh, yes yeah, it's, it's a lot of bike in front of you so i think it offers as much sort of weather protection as a big adventure bike you know if if not possibly more because because you're sort of crouched down a bit more you're a bit more behind the bike you know you're not sat as upright in it so yeah i think weather protection on this is is really rather good i'm, I'm getting air sort of here i'm getting air over all of my helmet but it's clean air it's not vibrating my helmet you know my chest is actually completely just the very top of my shoulders I can feel a bit of wind, but you know, I've got, I've got full air from about here of my helmet. But I don't mind that. It, it, it's dirty air, I don't like that vibrates your helmet around. This is clean, clean air, and uh, good weather protection around your body. Is that lightning or is that just the, the sun through there? Oh, I'm paranoid we're going to get a lightning storm now, and I'm going to get electrified. I want to sit behind you and just eat all of your water. Are we recording? Yeah, about to stop again because the bloody camera wouldn't do its business again. Wouldn't start recording. But we're in Salisbury now. So this is uh, Salisbury. The sun's even come out, not for long, I don't suspect, but we've got a bit of sunshine. Let's have a little sit rep. 165 miles range, when I, ha I haven't done 32 degrees lean angle left and right, by the way. Uh, we've done... Uh, we've done 46 miles, and we've got 165 mile range left. Wow, I mean, if that's accurate, that's amazing if that's accurate and i guess that's the question now we're going to be hitting the sort of salisbury plains in a minute so we're going to be on a bit of once we get through the town we'll be on a fast bit of uh, bit of road basically which will take us all the way uh to think, into dorset it will take us all the way into dorset certainly but uh, oh, if you loved it right, let's do a little bit of filtrage now it's quite wide with the mirrors and you know, the mirrors are quite far out it's quite a wide bike but it's incredibly stable you know when you come to a stop you don't have to put your feet down it's incredibly stable thank you sir so the blind spot detection is actually on the mirrors within the mirrors there you go you've got a little yellow triangle built within the mirrors showing me that that car is in my blind spot or that transit or van over this if we go forward a bit more, I can see him in the mirror now, now it's gone off. Because I can see him in my mirror, the blind spot detection has gone off. And that's what I want. Of some of these systems, you know, the, the car's way back now, but it would still be on, even though the car was perfectly visible in your mirror. So do you think there's somebody else on your inside? So, um, yeah, that seems like a pretty good system, that. I've actually noticed my actual sort of ankles and my boots around my ankle area and your shins are completely dry so there's obviously a lot of you know that lower fairing is directing the water and the air away from my sort of shins so that's quite a nice little uh, nice little touch from a weather protection point of view dry shins i've also noticed with the uh, cruise control it won't come on below sort of 35 miles an hour and if the car in front of you is braking that dog in the back of there if the car in front of you is actually braking you know, hard more than just it will apply the brakes as well so the adaptive cruise control will also apply the brakes and then when you go below 30 miles an hour it just turns off and says you're on your own <laughs> and you sort of have to take over so as soon as the speeds drop below 30 it just disengages 
bike is uh, brilliant on these sort of fast sweeping corners. You can get out of the seat, you know, like you can on a proper sports bike. Hang your weight off, get your elbow down towards the ground. You know, that's that's why I really like sort of sports tourers like this. Yeah, I love the way you can drop you can drop off the seat, get your knee out. <laughs> yeah. It's it's big and it's just a case of getting used to that weight I think. I think it actually handles really nicely, you know. It doesn't do anything quickly because it's you know it is a is a big bike but very smooth, very, very nice and the, the seating position is perfect to shift an arse cheek across and, and hang off and I like that, you know, if I'm going to the south of France, wherever I'm going, where you know, I've got decent roads when I get there. You can play. You can play with the roads on this bike. Beautiful. That's a nice little, uh, moderately fast, twisty corners here, where we can hang out the seat a little bit. Practice my superbike school body positioning. It's a push bike, not a double decker bus. Look at the river and oh, watch the Volvo. Look at that down there. Look at that while we try not to die. Look at that while we try not to die. Very pretty. Oh, the stag's having some work done. We are now in Dorset. This is Dorset, so we're getting close now. We've done 81 miles. I don't know how much further we've got to go. Uh, I don't know, 30 miles or so like that. The world's end. That's just a bumpy, fast corners. Absolutely loving them. The SX is loving this. Suspension so plush. Beautiful. a while because you may be a bit mucky. I guess I mentioned it before you know adventure bikes. Why buy an adventure bike when you can buy you know a touring sports bike. You know, the most sort of aggressive adventure bike is, is the is the V4S Multistrad. I mean that's the one which has impressed me the most. I love the KTM Superventure that's also brilliant that's a close second. But it's the V4 Multi for me if I was going to get an adventure bike. And probably, I mean ideally, the Pikes Peak version. Because I don't want to go off-road. I don't want 19-inch front wheels. I want 17-inch front wheels. Uh, but the Pikes Peak, I haven't ridden it. Ducati UK don't have any demos, unfortunately. I'd love to ride one. But they're 25 grand bike, you know, it's a ridiculous amount of money. This is a 22 grand bike. I mean, this is a ridiculous amount of money. But, you know, with with an adventure bike, yeah, the V4S does feel a bit more agile than this. Even with the 19-inch front wheel version, this feels a little bit more sort of heavy at the front end. Requires a bit more effort to change direction. The V4S just dances around, you know, so agile that bike. So agile. This does feel like a heavier machine than the V4S. But, I don't know if it's more rewarding to, to ride faster. It certainly is because you can ride a bit more like a sports bike, you know, get out of the seat. Well, you can on the V4S, but it doesn't feel quite as natural when you're in that riding position. But, uh, yeah, it's a toughie. I mean, both sort of similar priced machines, really. The V4S and this. The V4S is thirstier than this. I mean, you've got, I think you're going to have more limited range on the V4S as well. I think this actually uses less fuel. A supercharged motorcycle, one litre motorcycle using less wee fuel than uh, an adventure bike. A normally aspirated adventure bike. It's a bit crazy. 
This is also faster than the V4S, don't forget that. I mean, this is way faster than the V4S. The V4S is fast, but it, it doesn't make 200 horsepower. Yeah, this is an incredibly fast motorcycle. I'm going to stop at the vintage shack <laughs> and I'm going to set my sat nav up. Now the bike does come with, uh, you know, phone integration. It's got Kawasaki spin and it looks like it's exactly the same system as what the Suzuki GT had, which means you can do the side your cap so you get the full sat nav over your screen, but I can't get my phone to connect to the Bluetooth on this bike. It, it just won't have it. I don't know if it needs an update or whatever, but because you could have that side your caps, a full screen, sat nav navigation, brilliant, just like the V4S. But I can't get my uh, my what's it to connect and do its stuff. So um, we're gonna we're gonna have to use the old fashioned phone sat nav in the ultimate add-ons case. 15 or, or 10 percent off in the description, by the way, if you want one of those. There we go. Let us continue. So we've got 93 miles range. Now we've done 88 miles. And I've not been hanging about. The bike's got a 19 litre tank, just as a reminder. I also really like the way, you know, as I said, you, it's nice to move around on the seat, you know, stick your knee out, ride it like a full on sports bike. And as I mentioned in my first ride, it, you know, the, the way you brake. It's the same as a full-on sports bike. You know, even though it's a big, heavy 260 kilo bike, you're not scrubbing off speed with your back brake like you would on an adventure bike, like you would on the V4S. With this, you're braking at the front. So you're riding this exactly like a full-on track machine sports bike. You know, you ride it in the same way. Even though it's big, even though it's heavy, you know, it, 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 you ride it like that. And I, I really like that about this. You're not sacrificing your sporty riding style by getting on a big comfortable tourer. Oh, that sun is really rather warm. We're back up to 20 degrees again now. We're down to 15 when we went through the rain. We're back up to 20. Looks like the rain is gone. Let's have this fella. Wind her on up. So I had a little bit of arse discomfort about 20 minutes ago. But that's gone now. That could just be me getting used to being in the saddle again for a long time. I haven't done much riding at all since I moved house. I really haven't been out and done much riding. So I'm not used to, uh, you know, doing a, a fair distance on a bike. So it could have just been that. Because now I'm perfectly comfortable again. You know, when I came this far on the V4S, I was getting a really sore bum with that thin seat it's got, or narrow seat, I keep calling it thin, narrow seat, you know, it really gives me a sore, sore backside, but this is much more comfortable, much more comfortable than the V4S, and actually I think your leg position on this, it's not too much different to the V4S, the V4S is also very, a very low seat, so you, it feels about the same in the leg actually, sudden gunfire, don't worry. So I know, you know the V4S isn't, it's not the same as this, but it's a bike which is claiming to do similar things to this. You know, it's, it's a, around about the same money, give or take. So yeah, they're, they're claiming to do similar things, aren't they, really? I know the V4S, they'll be saying, oh, we can go off-road, you know, it's more versatile, bloody blah, blah, but people will be buying it to do the same things as what they want to do on this. So, uh, and, and I tell you, this is no more uncomfortable than a V4S Multistrada, and it's certainly better on fuel. This is very pleasant so far, more sudden gunfire signs up. There's obviously a military, I think there's a tank base around here somewhere. Oh yeah, there we go, there's the tank place. This is the same way I came when I went to Dirtledore. Uh, Daredle Doors that way, Lulworth Cove is this way, but they're very, very, very close to each other. Amazing coastline all the way along this Jurassic Coast in Dorset. It's an incredible coastline around here. 
it's it's some brilliant natural sights to see down here well worth a visit if you're sort of semi-local or if you come on holiday if you're from, if you're a northerner come on holiday down south and uh, come to the jurassic coast it's bloody brilliant uh, okay so uh, oh jake's homemade ice cream we're doing that motorcycles only so here it is vanilla oreo and butterscotch clotted cream three scoops it's a hell of an ice cream oh the cove ain't bad either i knew there'd be some mad full swimming what did i tell you Now ready. The views better be worth it. But yeah, that was uh, quite amazing actually. Quite, quite amazing that. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, Vanilla and Oreo, I think it was clotted cream and something, and then just a plain vanilla. I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to ice cream. I do like a plain vanilla. But yeah, fantastic place, well worth a visit. There's also a chippy there as well. That's for next time. <laughs> I might have got a ticket as well. This gentleman here with the clipboard issuing tickets to people, and I didn't get a ticket. I assumed motorcycles were free. Well, they're not, they're a pound. So I've bought a, a retrospective ticket, <laughs> but I suspect I'll get something in the post. Or oh, Kawasaki will. <laughs> Kawasaki will get something in the post. And then I should, they forward it to me. So there we are, the Kawasaki H2SX, the 2022 version. It's a beautiful bike, a beautiful, beautiful machine. A little bit annoying, you, you can't go into the menu and adjust the electronic things, you know, while you're rolling. Let's just pull over and I'll show you. You can do it while you're, while you're stationary. So I can go into vehicle settings, cornering lights on, adaptive cruise control, far. So I'm going to put that on near and we'll see the difference it makes with the adaptive on near. Now I'm sure I've already done this once and I'm sure that has reset as I've started and stopped the bike. Yes, yeah, so you've got one blob there now, meaning that's on near. Let me turn it on and off again. I'm going to see if that defaults back to far every time you start the bike, because that'll be really irritating. That'll be really irritating. Splash screen. Cruise control. Yeah, it's gone to far. So if you want it on near, looks like you've got to do that every time you start the bike. That's annoying, isn't it? Oh, the key's in my bloody pocket. This is why I love keyless. Come on. Turn on key fob in three, two, one. Gotta love a bit of keyless. So a few little niggles around the electronics. Ugh, I wish manufacturers wouldn't do that. But I mean, even the far cruise control is fine, you know. The near suits my style of aggressive riding better, but for most people, the far is probably absolutely fine, and it's the safest option anyway, to be fair. But here we go, Kawasaki H2SX standard. A beautiful, beautiful machine. And what I'll do, we've got 90 miles range left, and I've done 98 miles, 98.9. So, it, you know, it's, it said it was 199 miles before I set off. It's not far on. I'll let you know when I, I put, I'll switch the camera back on after the credits. I'll let you know how many miles we managed to get on the fuel. Stick around for the credits. See you later. So I'm nearly home <laughs> and I'm still on the same fill up. Done 171.8 miles and I've got 19 miles left on the range. The fuel light came on when there was 30 miles left. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be about 195-ish miles to the tank. 
as, as more or less predicted. That's really quite incredible when I've been riding, if anything, aggressively. So, you know, incredible range from a two, a two litre, a one litre supercharged motorcycle with 200 horsepower, 19 litre fuel tank, absolute cruise monster. Also, the blind spot detection, the adaptive cruise control, it's all been working absolutely fantastically. Here we go, watch it here, the light comes on, as soon as the car comes out of your blind spot, out of your mirror, the light comes on, as soon as he's past the mirror, it goes off. Adaptive cruise control keeping me behind this car in front. If I pull over to the other lane, it'll accelerate up to my program 75. This electronics works really, really well. If you're overtaking the car, the blind spot mirror doesn't come on. It's only when someone's overtaking you. At the petrol station, 178 miles, and the, the range to empty has disappeared. <laughs> Well, we'll do a fill it up now and we'll see how much fuel she takes. It was brimming when I set off. Let's have a look. Look how big the keyless key is. Absolutely humongous. And you need it to get to the fuel as well. Brimming. 18.57 litres. It's a 19 litre tank. So, <laughs> half a litre to play with. I've used quite a bit then. So 178 miles on 18 and a half litres. You do the maths. Maths, not math. <laughs>